automatically sourcing Amazon products with a Google Sheet that I created. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I'm doing this, and it does not even require any software. You can literally do this just with a free Chrome extension and this Google Sheet. That's it, just those two. And I will show you how to do this in more detail, but I did want to quickly just show you an example. Here's a product on Amazon, for instance. 75 milligrams, 120 capsules. And then these are some possible sources that I found for this product. And if I open one of these sources, um, I do see that it is the same product at the supplier as we see on Amazon. But as far as then going on to calculate profit, that's another thing that I will show you in this video. And then at the end, I'll show you how you actually will be able to take all your results from the Google Sheet and create a, another separate copy of the Google Sheet uh, results that you can actually share with the team uh, to help you go through these products um, as well. So anyway, just stick around for the video. I'm going to show you the whole process in this video. Just make sure you watch the rest of the video to see the process. So the first step in sourcing Amazon products automatically with this Google Sheet is to actually get Amazon product data into the sheet. And there are two main ways we can do that. One way is to actually go to Amazon itself, and this is the software free method using a free Chrome extension. The other way is we can use Keepa data features, which is a paid monthly software, and we can use Product Finder to pull product data that way. Now, um, I'm going to start off by showing you how to do it with Amazon. And in this case, I'm looking for the brand Vitacost from the supplier Vitacost.com. So I'm looking for this particular brand Vitacost, and I'm going to search that brand on Amazon. Now, even if you're not interested in selling this type of product, it doesn't matter what you search. The way that you do this is still the same. You search something, and you get product results. As I look through the results, I see that I'm getting what I'm looking for, which is I'm getting the Vitacost brand products. And at that point, you just click on the free Chrome extension and it will scrape the products. Now you just have to wait for it. Once you see that red box around the products, that's what you're looking for. If you're not getting the red box around these, if it's around something else, click on try another table and make sure it's around this. You do clearly see links in here. If you look, these are the links in the first column to the products. And you should also have titles as you scroll over. And if you go a little further, you should be seeing um, uh, the prices as well. And those are the three main things that we need right now. Now, one thing is I would like to get more pages. If I hit start crawling, that might not really work because the results are on different pages. So instead, you're going to click next to infinite scroll and then turn it off. And it's going to say locate next button. At this point, you click the locate next button. You scroll all the way down to the bottom of these Amazon results. You find the next button and you click on it one time. Then go back down here to the bottom where your Chrome extension is still open. This is the Instant Data Scraper logo. And go ahead and click on Start Crawling. And now what it will do is automatically crawl, as it's called, through the pages. And it's doing that by clicking on the next button. Now that you told it where the next button is right so it's not gonna find the next button you have to tell it where that next button is and then it's able to do that alright so um, that's good I have seven pages that are scraped and 370 rows so that's about 370 products do keep in mind however that some of these things that are around the side these will get picked up as well so you will have a few extra things in there um, but that's fine what I'm going to do is click on CSV and that will download this file to a CSV. The file is Amazon. There's a 32 in parentheses because I have downloaded that many files. So I've downloaded a lot of Amazon CSVs and that's why it says Amazon 32. So now I'm going to actually minimize this. I could even close it actually, but I'm just going to minimize it and then find myself over on the Amazon uh, system. Now I was just using it, so I'm going to make sure that I clear whatever needs to be cleared. Um, so let me look at the IDS CSV. Yeah, I still have data in there. So I'm going to clear the IDS CSV by clicking clear IDS CSV. Make sure that's clear. And what I'm going to do is on the same sheet, IDS CSV, I'm going to import file import. And I'm going to bring, by the way, IDS is Instant Data Scraper, the name of that Chrome extension, the free Chrome extension. And I'm going to import. This is the last file I just downloaded, Amazon with the 32. 
okay and I'm going to upload that file here into this Google Sheet and then replace current sheet and then click import data and that brings all of this into the Google Sheet okay you see the titles here these are the links in the first column and then you might see some yeah and you, of course you see the prices over here and, and a bunch of other stuff right now I'm gonna go to sourcing sheet and on the sourcing sheet all I have to do now is click on import IDS data which means get the data off of the instant data scraper CSV and so it's going to import that data from the IDS CSV so you imported the IDS CSV into the system and now this is going to take the data from it and bring it here now it will take a little time because what it has to do is actually look for these different things um, there is a columns map that has to be set up for this and I already set that columns map up for Amazon so you don't have to do anything for Amazon you just bring in the data import IDS data and it will bring the data in the next thing to show up should be the titles now once you have the links you can go ahead and do the get ASINs because what what happens is that when you scrape it like this okay it is not going to get the ASINs from here okay the ASINs are not available just from this from these results so you um, have to click get ASINs and I have uh, a function that is automatically grabbing the ASIN from these Amazon links these are all your different Amazon product links and it's grabbing the ASINs and putting them in the ASIN column right now at this point I can actually start um, sourcing products this will continue to walk down by the way just want to explain that there are few links here that are not really products they're just like results kind of like extra links that were going probably around the edge of the page and so those are not actually products so you won't see any ASINs for those All right so just be aware of those kind of links okay but they will not interfere now um, once I have the titles and the prices will come eventually the prices take the longest but once I have the titles I can begin sourcing products by click by first of all making sure you're in that first row make sure you're on this row and then click source all products as you can see the prices just came in and now let's see about sourcing these products and there we go it's on its way and it's trying to find sources of these products now some are coming up not found that's perfectly normal some products just will not be found and it might literally just be that they're not found at that moment by the search engine that tried to find them but sometimes you can rerun them later and get uh, more results um, so but I will go ahead and run it and see what it gives me right now and what happens is that there's actually a list of uh, suppliers that it will go through which are provided here it's a very long list over 3,000 uh, suppliers are on this list and they're just suppliers that I scraped off of uh, cashback sites like rake it in skewered and I'm always looking to add more and I also have I may have some uh, supplier lists that you can download uh, like the one from tactical arbitrage I might have that um, available in the description of this video and you can always add I'm planning I'm planning to add those here anyway but any supplier that's not here you can go to the bottom with control down on your keyboard and you can just add in that supplier here if you're trying to direct your search to any particular supplier you have more of a chance of that supplier coming up the rule is the supplier must be searchable on Google their products specifically have to be searchable on Google what does that mean that means that I have to be able to Google uh, a product title on Amazon and it will bring me to their website if I if that if their website is hidden if they have the products hidden from the general public then this is not going to be able to find them okay so it has to be a supplier who is available on Google because this is that's how this finds the products is finding the products through a web search okay so it's not gonna you know sign into your uh, so this is really gonna be very um, geared towards like arbitrage uh, sellers any and what I mean is um, anyone who's doing any form of arbitrage whether it be online arbitrage drop shipping um, you know online arbitrage with FBA whatever it is that you're doing if you're using online stores uh, to source uh, products this is going to be very useful for you all right now you do see that it's coming up with sources on some of these and some are not 
Um, what happens is that uh, what you're going to do rather, let me say this, what I will do right now is I will target a particular supplier. So right now I will target Vitacost.com. So that's what this box is for. In this box you're going to type in a particular supplier who you're kind of hunting for. So if I'm looking for Vitacost.com, I will type Vitacost.com into this box. And um, any row that has Vitacost, it will show found. So that means found Vitacost. Okay. Then I will check the links. These are the possible sources. It's going to give me a maximum of three. And I'm going to check those possible sources here and see what I get. All right. So here's one possible source and here's another possible source. Also, the Amazon link. Right. First of all, I should open the Amazon link so I can know what product I'm sourcing. Right. And then I'm going to compare these and see if they're the same. So these, right, I can look at the bottle. Wow, this picture is small. And um, 1535, 35 billion, 60 vegetarian capsules, Vitacos, probiotic. Yeah, these are the same, right? There might be some information provided on one that's, you know, but these really are the same. Even the uh, titles provide the same information, right? We see the price is 1513. On uh, Vitacos, where it is 19.90 on Amazon, right? Now, as far as profit calculation goes, um, that is another thing. Now, exceeded maximum execution time. By the way, let me mention this before I go into profit. This is not actually an error. So a lot of people think this is an error or a problem that they need to solve. It is not. This is Google Sheets. Um, Google Sheets will not run a script more than a certain amount of time. So what happens is um, the first script that I started running, probably the Get Asins or one of those scripts, uh, they will keep running forever because they're looking for more product data. So like Get Asins, it's going to keep looking. It doesn't know when to stop, and eventually Google Sheets will say, "Hey, that has been running too long. It's exceeded the maximum execution time," and then it, it will just stop it. Now getting a profit, what you're going to do is type in the uh, fifteen thirteen. You're going to type that price in right here, right? We're talking about source number one, and so price number one is 1513, right? And again, another script just ended that kept going for too long. Let me see if it's this. Okay, I'm going to get to the profit, but I have to point these things out. Now, what happened here is that it got down to 152 sources, and it said, okay, it's been running too long. Does that mean I can't get more products? Not at all. You click here, the first blank space, you hit source all products, and it will just continue finding more products. So that's why I said you technically could actually source 10,000 products, but you will have to keep restarting it each time it stops, and it will keep sourcing and sourcing and sourcing. So there's really no limit to the number of products you can source because you can click and keep on going, right? Uh, but you probably would want to keep it to a you know, more reasonable number of products. When I put 1513 for the price for this source, I already have the price information from Amazon. And so what happens is then I have a tax percentage, which you can set here by putting in a number and it will set like a default. But if you want to change it for this particular one, you could change it, right? For whatever reason, whatever you think your tax would be. And then if you have a referral fee, um, generally this department is 15%. If you don't know your department referral fee, you can use the referral. This is Seller Central. You go. On, I have this link in the video. It's called the Amazon Fee Schedule for referral fees. Right. You scroll down and you find your category. Most are 15%, and you see that it is 15% uh, for your category. Right. This is like uh, this category that we're in now is like somewhere under Health and Household or something like that. But I, I already know that it's 15%. Right. So I'm not really looking it up. Okay, so that's 15%. Then the other part is the FBA fee. Now these are old, these are FBA fees I had in here from before, so I should have really taken them out. So I'm actually going to set all of them to zero. I need to clear those out to zero. So I put zero here and I click set FBA fee. Now if you're doing FBA, then of course you'll have an FBA fee. Um, if you're using a Chrome extension, you can get it very easily. 
from the product just using uh, the Chrome extension and just type that in here. If you're not using the Chrome extension, if you don't have any kind of software at all, then you're going to go to the FBA calculator. Again, this is provided on Seller Central. This is part of your Amazon seller account. I have a link for you to get to this, okay? In the uh, description of this video, just look for the link. You're just, you're just going to put your ASIN in here. Let me go ahead and copy this ASIN. You're going to put your ASIN in here and just search your ASIN and the product is going to come up and um, if you want to get I think if you just hit calculate you're really supposed to be putting in cost to calculate profit but I'm not using it for that right now I just want to get the FBA fee so all I do is hit calculate and it's just I'm looking for this fulfillment by Amazon fees okay. and then over here 354 right if they don't have the fee you're gonna to have to indicate the dimensions and the weight but as long as they already have the fee, it's going to tell you three fifty four is the fee. Same thing as the Chrome extension, three dollars fifty four cents. So now you know the FBA fee, and you're going to type in three dollars fifty four cents for the FBA fee, right? And now you can see what your profit would be with that FBA fee and with your costs. Okay. If you're not doing FBA, if you're doing fulfilled by merchant or you're doing drop shipping, then you need to add your shipping cost. Okay. And of course, your FBA fee in that case, you you don't have an FBA fee. Right, you have to pay a few zero, and then you can add your shipping here. Or if you want, I mean, it's a little tricky, but you could put your shipping costs as your FBA fee because FBA fee essentially is a shipping fee. It's what it, it's the, sh the fee for Amazon to ship your product to the customer. So it's really like the same thing. So you could literally just type in what you think your shipping will be as your FBA fee, and it's really the same thing. But um, I, I would rather add it with the price of the product. So if I know that Vitacost is going to charge me five dollars shipping. I would rather just put here twenty dollars and thirteen cents right away. Do zero FBA fee. That's a more exact way to do it, and see that I would have a negative profit. So I might not profit from doing fulfilled by merchant. If I have to pay shipping, I'm not going to profit, right? That's something I want to know. But if I do FBA, I am going to profit. Okay, and so it depends on the fulfillment method that you're doing. So that's just one product. Obviously, you're gonna if you're again, I'm looking for this particular supplier, so I'm looking for anything. Uh, from the supplier. Here's another product uh, found and here's the product on Amazon first of all and for one checking the sources making sure that these products match but you can see in fact it's a match alright it is, it is successfully matching these products uh, matching is a lot more precise and exact when you start on Amazon and you Google the product because Amazon titles tend to be a little more complete. A lot of times supplier titles aren't that great. Um, so there's a lot of information provided in a lot of Amazon titles that helps find the product on the web. So here we see the product. Um, okay. $14.99. And here the product is $15.99. I already know that's not a profit. The price prices are too close. Okay. So that's pretty much the idea. I am going to go ahead and close all of those. Um, I should have, I should mention though, by the way, uh, I would like to just quickly mention this, um, before I continue, when you have, and I really want to open the Amazon link, not, not the source, when you have the Chrome extension, seller assistant app Chrome extension, um, you can actually save your products automatically, any product you're interested in, to a Google Sheet with the save button. I have a little video, a short video showing you how to set up your Google Sheet and connect it to Sell Assistant app is very easy to do. So you can save all of the product data, including the cost, the profit, and everything uh, for your product. Okay, even the source link, right? So if you have the source link, this is the source link, right? You'll you're going to actually be able to take the source link and copy it, and uh, actually put that link in here, as well as the cost of the product, the fifteen thirteen. I know this one is not profitable, but just as a quick example, and you can actually put that in and then save the product. All right, add notes wherever you want. I have a short video because that's another process. And okay, and I have a link uh, where you get a deal uh, for through my link. You get a deal for this Chrome extension, and it's it's a very low cost Chrome extension per month, very low cost, and um, it's going to really make a huge difference in your product research if you're not already using it. Highly, highly recommend that you use this because you, you need this product data. You really need the product data. It's, it's, it's look, it even tells you how many uh, pieces it's selling per month. So you get in sales data, you, you get the number of sellers right away, FBA sellers, FBM, all of that. Right? You get in a lot of different uh, stuff there. 
the tax is built into the cost automatically unless you want it to be tax free if you know you're not paying tax then you put tax free if you're not paying any tax at your supplier okay but it does assume a 9.75 percent tax in the profit calculation so just keep that in mind all right so that is something i just really want to mention that you can save that data to a google sheet and uh you get a deal through my link okay so we got that red thing again that means it, if it stops sourcing again so i got to see where it stopped it stopped here so now i'm going to click here and click source all products again and it will continue sourcing uh more products and it should definitely get to the bottom before it stops again right now um that's it i mean it's the same process i could continue doing more products but it's really the same thing it's, it's that's pretty much the process I do like to open up a few products uh, when I demonstrate a video uh, tool like this because the fact of the matter is you don't have the tool. You may not have the tool yet. Uh, you, you might not have, you know, and you do want to see that the tool works and how it works, right? Of course. All right. So by the course, you see that this is a match again. And if you're wondering, well, how can this even be possible? It, it, it's really quite simple. All it's doing is this. It's taking the title. And doing a search same way you do a Google search and then the system is saying well what what links do I have in here and then it's going through the links and remember I have a list of suppliers and Vitacost is on that list and then it's saying well well where are the Vitacost links and then the program says well here's a Vitacost link here's a Vitacost here's a Vitacost and then it takes a Vitacost link right and usually the correct link is um, the first link and it just takes that link and says here here's the link and then it gives you the link so it's actually you know very it's, it's pretty easy for this thing to find the correct link as long as the search engine gives correct results right so um, here's another product on Amazon and then here's usually the first source uh, source one is usually the correct one but I do let it pull up more than one just in case but usually the first one is the right one but if you know you can always check other ones but usually the first one is correct right again we see a match it's just you know you find a matches all over the place right I'm not I know I'm not even looking at profitability right now I'm just looking I'm just showing you that these match okay of course not every product that you find is gonna be profitable that's just not realistic if it were that easy you wouldn't even need this tool right if you could just search any random product on Amazon and it was always profitable then you wouldn't even need it, tools like this right the reason why this is helpful is because not every product is profitable and so this is going to reduce some of the work where you don't have to go through a million products to find one so here you, you see that uh, we have 855 on Vitacross and we have 1631 on Amazon because of the price difference there's a chance of profit I must have found it before because I already have the cost so 855 I already have the cost Okay, it's already given me uh, ROI of approximately, if you round it off, 10% based on the FBA fee. So I already see product uh, profit on this product, okay, with FBA. If you do an FBM, you have to just check those numbers. Generally, with the FBM, it gives you the FBM profit, um, but you have to subtract shipping from the profit because they're not, for FBM, they're not including any shipping. See, FBM is just referral fee, cost of goods, and the tax that you're going to pay on a cost of goods and that's it so you have to now subtract the shipping because they don't know your shipping costs right so if, again if it's five dollars shipping you're not gonna make profit right on this particular product okay so um, that's just something to keep in mind so as you can see having the Chrome extension is gonna help a lot because then you don't have to actually put the numbers in to figure out the profit you can figure it out right there in front of you on uh, Amazon and so that's gonna save you time but again if you do not have the Chrome extension you will just type the numbers into my system and it will provide you with a profit calculation as well right uh, okay now these now you do sometimes have a situation like this and you may wonder if these match according to the title these are the same product Vitacross wild blueberry extract 1000 milligrams per serving 120 capsules and when we look here we do see the same thing um, and when they're the same exact brand and it's a private brand and the description is this similar they got they have to be the same product because they're not gonna make like 20 different versions of a 1000 milligram wild blueberry extract 120 capsules right that doesn't make sense and it's in the same brand 
So they're the same product, but what has happened, uh, the packaging has usually changed. Perhaps they have changed the sticker on the bottle. And you have to realize Amazon listings are not really maintained. It's not like there's someone making sure that this picture gets updated with the product. Vitacross creates these products. Of course, their picture is going to be updated with the current bottle. But the listing on Amazon, no. So um, I believe these I believe these are the same product, but that the bottle, um, they've changed the sticker on the bottle. They've modernized it to look better, the way that stickers look on vitamin bottles now. And perhaps um, if uh, I go, if I scroll down, I might be able to see when this listing was created. See, so, oh, look at this. Date first available October 8th, 2010. It is 2022. So this product, this listing created 12 years ago. Well, see, so that's exactly my point. Right, so 12 years ago, they did not bottle this the same way that they're going to bottle it 12 years later, especially not at a you know a supplier that's probably when I say new compared to like a Walmart or someplace that's been around for decades, right? You know they're still going to be doing a lot of new things. Okay, so um, just want to explain that don't don't always expect the pictures to be identical, right? And this is pretty much the process, okay? And you can just continue this process. You can open this one as well. Uh, again, I just want to show you some matches. I just want to prove to you that um, it finds matches, if that is sources, I should say, in this case, start on Amazon sourcing the products. Uh, so it does find sources for these products. And that is it. Okay, another product, right? 180, 180 soft gels. Now, uh, so this is the data you have and then these are the sources now how about brand how about rank and all of that well you don't get that off of the Amazon page but if you use keep a data product uh, features you will get that I will quickly show you if you want to use keep a data product features how to get the data alright so what you would do is you go to keepa dot com you have a, a subscription this is also a low cost monthly subscription but you get there's tons of things that this thing can do, that Keepa can do, okay? But I'm going to focus on one thing right now. Keepa Data Product Finder, and I'm going to have to refresh it. That was something I was running before when I was testing my system. Um, I have to do a lot of runs to test this, these systems. You wouldn't believe how many times I have to run the same things over and over, all right, to make sure it's working right for you because I want to make sure that you have a, I'm giving you something that works, you know? So now here's the Keepa data product finder. And what I want to do is find the, first of all, I'm going for the Vitacost brand in this case. So I'm going to do control F on brand. That's the easiest way to get to the brand part, which is really just the second white box. And I'm going to go where it says brand. And usually if you type in the name of a brand, it will just show up on the list. Vitacost brand, 858 products. So you see you can get way more products than Keepa, but actually... I usually like to kind of uh, narrow it down to from one for the sales rank. You don't have to do this, but I like to do that because I like to just see products that actually have a rank on them. So sales rank number from one, meaning one or larger, meaning it actually has a rank because you have some listings where there's no product rank. All right. And those a lot of times are not good listings. Okay. So I like to say from one and then down towards the bottom, the last part the Amazon out of stock if you can't find it you can control F on that also and type in OOS and you will usually find it right away 90 days out of stock I don't want Amazon to be selling it because it's hard to compete with Amazon so for the 90 days out of stock percentage on Amazon I'm gonna say 100 percent out of stock for the past 90 days this is what this measures. so I'm gonna put 100 in this case it doesn't really even change the results because apparently this is not really being sold by Amazon so good okay so then I click find products so I've got all these products Vitacost brand they're not sold by Amazon alright they've got ranks uh, and I've got all this product data I'm just gonna export the products all active columns all the data to a CSV click on export it's very important that you do that alright now the files been downloaded to my computer so I'm gonna head back over to my Amazon uh, uh, Google Sheet sourcing auto sourcer 
and I'm going to close this thing at the bottom. And what I'm going to do, remember this is a whole new set of data, so I'm actually going to erase what I have now. I'm going to clear the product data, and I'm going to clear the sources as well, and start over. And even, well I can leave the vitacost.com, because I'm, that's the st I'm still looking for that supplier's that supplier and um, what else and I know I'm gonna use the Keepa CSV so I'm gonna go to the Keepa CSV and make sure it's clear file import upload select a file from your device okay it's gonna be the Keepa export file that I just downloaded open that file this is just the same process as I did before just a different sheet replace current sheet import data All right again make sure you did that on the Keepa CSV sheet Okay, so if you're doing this, make sure that you just did it on the CSV. Keep a CSV. All right, make sure you're on the right one. And then this gives you all this different product data. Keep a, obviously, you're going to get way more product data than when you scan the page with a Chrome extension. Okay, you just get way more data. Now, a lot of this data is not even being used by my program. I realize that. So, but with time, I might add more things there if people feel like they want more. I might eventually add more, right? So right now it's brand rank URL, but I might add more. I'm going to go ahead and click import Keepa data. And um, you'll see that with Keepa, you're going to get way more data, like the rank, like the brand, which you already know the brand anyway. But And you're going to get URLs, and you're going to get ASINs. So you don't need to use get ASINs when you do it with Keepa. Okay, you're going to get all the product data in here, all right? And yes, there's more data I could bring into this. I could do like stars, like how many stars rate in. I could bring in number of FBA sellers and FBM sellers. There's all kinds of stuff that I'll be able to bring in here. If you get a copy of this Google Sheet now, when I do those updates and I decide to add more data, if people want more data, I'm going to send you a copy. All the process is just the same. You just source all products. There's really no difference. You're going to click source all products. It's going to start sourcing products. And um, on this run, you may notice I'm getting more sources, it seems. I believe I'm getting a few more sources than I got before. And there's some products where it's just not going to get a source for whatever reason. And, and it's hard to know why that is. Um, but for those, you know, you can open them. And uh, you could always do them manually. But really, the concept of doing this in bulk is that you don't worry about what doesn't come out. Some people contact me concerned about what's not showing up. That's actually the wrong thing to focus on. You should be focusing, when you do things in bulk, you focus on what does show up, right? Which is the majority, right? Most of these are fine because that's the whole point. If you found 100, thing, 100 products showed up for you or even 50 products showed up for you, that's 50 products that showed up in five seconds that you didn't have to find them that would have taken you, you know, five hours. Right, so even if you just find 50 products, you're you're ahead of the game compared to just doing this 100% manually, right? That's the way you're supposed to look at uh, doing these in bulk, right? And for those who have used source and software, you know that source and software uh, is not perfect, and that you spend way more money on it. Okay, meaning every month you're spending good money on software, and um, not everything always matches. Not every product are they able to source it, you know. So it's the same thing, right? But with this, you only have to get this Google Sheet one time, and that's it. There's no monthly charge for this Google Sheet. There's no monthly charge, right? <laughs> so because it's a Google Sheet, all right? It's not even an add-on. Add-ons are where you install an add-on. You pay for those add-ons usually every month on Google Sheets. This is not even that. This is literally a Google Sheet that once you have it, you have a copy of this Google Sheet on your account to run forever, all right? And it will, and it will just keep working. So this is really, I think, you know, uh, a high, in my opinion, I mean, and I'm not saying this because just because I created it, but um, just as a seller myself and, you know, having been in the position of paying a lot for software, uh, this is what it's motivated me and inspired me to start creating these programs because as I sat down and I thought about it, I realized that I could with my background in computer science, create programs to do at least, to some degree, the things that I was paying for uh, another program to do. And that is really the idea behind this, to unlock that power 
and bring it to you through Google Sheets, All right? To some degree, at least. So as you can see, it is finding these sources, and again, it's the same process. You click the product on Amazon, you investigate the source. Again, I'm just going to randomly keep opening products because I do want you to see that this actually works. <laughs> because what is the point if, you know, otherwise, right? So I do want you to see that it actually works. 150 milligrams, 240 capsules, and again, here we have it, right? And we have uh, a match. Okay. And then again, if you have the Chrome extension, you can get the profit right away if there is any. If not, then, then there isn't. Okay, so, uh, all right. Now, that is pretty much the process of the system. I don't think there's anything else I really need to show except for export results. Um, let's. I, I do want to see if this is still sourcing, however. Okay, it is done sourcing. So these scripts... I'm not even sure which what these are. This might be the import still running, although I believe I already got. Okay, so it might still be bringing in data or something. Well, let me go ahead and show you the export results. When you click export results, and uh, I should have showed you the export sheet first. First, the sheet is clear, and now it copies the results to the export sheet. What it means is that it just takes this sheet all the way from here, all the way over to the end. Only the from the titles, the column headings down, it copies it into a new sheet, separate sheet into this. It's always called export sheet. The sheet is always here. And now this is here. And the good thing is the formulas are still there. So if you put like a price in here, right? Okay, you can dismiss that. It will calculate profit, see? And everything. All right, the formulas are still here. The use of this, I what I have in mind here is that once you've worked on some products, all right, and you've got some sources, you don't have to keep working here in the sourcing sheet, right? You can now you've sent your stuff over to the export sheet, and now you can copy this to a new spreadsheet. Okay, how did I do that? Right click, let me show you. Right click on export sheet, copy to new spreadsheet and then you can actually open that spreadsheet all right and you can use this the sources are already there now all you have to do is put in your prices and it will calculate the profit it has the formulas and everything to calculate the profit and ROI all right you can put in your fees you can change you know whatever you need to change um, and you can still look at your sources and open your sources all right so you can still open your sources you can still open your Amazon links with this. And the great thing is you can then take a file like this and you can share it with your team, all right, um, whoever else you're working with. And maybe if you have more products than you're willing to go through, you guys can split the work up or you can pass the work off to someone else who works for you. You know, this could be useful. And what you're going to do is view, freeze the first row, view, freeze one row. That keeps the first row frozen so that you can scroll down and keep the titles in place and you just do that and you just navigate it right you have to give it a name so I would do like Vitacross brand uh, products for instance you can call it that and now you have a whole separate sheet of Vitacross brand products that you and your team are able to navigate whether it's just you by yourself over time or you're gonna share it with other people and that's about it. I mean, that's this is this is the process, right? So that is the process. And um, then, when you're done with that, you go back to the main sourcing sheet. And uh, these buttons can move. Sometimes this does happen, but I'm, I'm going to click clear export sheet, and the export sheet will be clear. The colors left behind, it doesn't matter. But the sheet, the data is clear. I'm just clearing it because I want to copy new stuff there next time. But even if I don't clear it, it doesn't matter. It's just going to copy over it anyway but that's just so I can use it later if this happens I'm kinda glad it happened Google Sheets does not lock buttons unfortunately like in Excel when I add buttons the buttons stay automatically I mean they just stay in place they don't move around Google Sheets is you know it's Google Sheets so you have to right click on the button then you can drag the button but uh, sometimes 
it's stuck in between the panes. So I'm going to do view, freeze, no columns, because this is a frozen column so that you can scroll data here and stay keep this in place. So sometimes it can get stuck behind that, so then I have to turn that off. And you can put these wherever you need them to be. Right? I know FBA fee, I like it over by, almost forgot where it was. Yes, over here by the FBA fee. And, um, okay, and I have to click off of it to leave it there. Set tax, right click it, and just drag it over here. Um, so this happens sometimes, it doesn't always happen, but, and this one I'll just put over here, get prices. I did not mention uh, get prices, it's really more of something for the future. Um, I do have a get price function that I use, I've been using to get prices off of some online stores, not all. So you could say some suppliers. So it does work on some suppliers, right? But not all. You know, um, each supplier is different, it has to be programmed different. So, but it does work on some suppliers. And that will get prices and put them in here automatically, but it does not work with Vitacost. All right, but there's some suppliers that it can get the price automatically. Uh, but for most suppliers, uh, you know, you will have to manually put these prices in here. The only other solution I can think of right now would be to use uh, SkewGrid, which is a, a software, uh, to pick up the links. It works with tons of suppliers and will pick up prices for a lot of different suppliers. And um, you could use that and then export their data and bring it in. So that's more for the future um, but right now mostly we're going to be putting prices in manually to calculate profit or using the Chrome extension or whatever method we use uh, to calculate the profit on these products and so that is it that is the system this is how you source Amazon products from Amazon to sources this is how you do it automatically Google Sheets with or without software meaning just Amazon and the free Chrome extension or Keeper data features which again I have a link for this as well if you want to use Keeper data features you can use my link in the description of the video you can also use my link to get a deal on Cell Assistant app and I also have an IP alert Chrome extension which helps with brand IP alerts if you're interested in that as well you can see the link for that I have a discount code for that and um, that is basically uh, it and I should say I will receive potentially receive an affiliate commission uh, for those links and so that uh, just does help to support the channel and this project the time and technology costs of course of running and testing these systems and the data and the research and all that uh, email systems and a bunch of things that go into making this possible so then I do thank you for that and um, that's about it. So if you want to contact me, I have my contact information in, this, in the description of this video as well. Uh, if you want to contact me directly, or if you just want to leave comments down below, do subscribe to the channel, like the video, help support the channel, if you will. And uh, I'm Mr. Mark. This is Excel for Amazon. I look forward to hearing from you or seeing you around on the channel.